What's going on guys? It's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. Hopefully it's not too loud here, but it's Labor Day weekend and it is packed here at Boston Billiard. A lot of tables running. We're gonna hop into the 2-5 game right now. Last session, if you didn't watch the last video, we got absolutely destroyed. You'll probably check that out if you wanna see a massive losing session. Uh, it didn't go well the last video, but time to rebound here uh, back to the place where we played a ton. Hopefully the action's gonna be a good time opening up a brand new 2-5, and we're trying to play into the 5-10 whenever that table opens. Um, like I said, we have some really big games coming up on future live streams that have probably already happened real time, but here I'm trying to practice for that, play bigger, and uh, let's try to run it up here at the good old stomping grounds of Boston Billiard. Um, if you're new to the channel, if you are just watching this, that like button is always free, so hit that. It really helps the channel grow, so it's always much appreciated, but um, let's try to hop in there. Let's get into the cards. Let's run it up. This session gets a little crazy, and it starts off with pocket threes in the small blind. There's an early position open to $20. We get two players to make the call of 20. And here in the small blind, just gonna make the call to set mine as well. We're gonna go to a flop multi-way. Flop comes queen, three, five, rainbow. We get a warm welcome back to Boston Billiards with bottom set. Action check to a middle position player who throws out a bet of $35. And we get a beautiful sight to see as the cutoff raises to 90. Back onto me and we're out of position and I'm unsure of what we should be doing here on this board as it is very dry. I decide on just making the call for $90. We're definitely not afraid of too many cards to come and we're happy to see the action follow through. The middle position player makes the call as well so we're going three ways to a turn which is pretty ideal. The case three, of course, we run into quads. Um, I'm going to check here first to act, and unfortunately, action actually checks around. So, hoping to see some more action and a good looking river. The river is a queen, beautiful, as now we can get max value against a queen X holding, as it's more likely someone's going to have that. And first to act here, both players only have about $300 left in their stack, so I'm going to play for all of it. I rip it all in, about 300 effective. The middle position player folds, unfortunately, so really hoping for the cutoff to bail us out. And she does with a quick call and with king queen. And I think quads are going to win this one. A pretty sick start to the session, and I'm happy to scoop this one up. The hand following that we get moved to a main game here at the 2-5 table. We have king jack offsuit in plus two. There is a button straddle and there is a small blind blind raise to 45. And this guy says that every time there's a button straddle and he's in the small blind, he's going to blind raise $5 more next orbit. So in this orbit, it's $45. Next orbit will be $50, so on and so forth. This guy's Kevin who watches the channel and you'll see he's a pretty fun character to have at the table. The big blind calls the $45 blind raise and with king jack offsuit, definitely a good candidate to raise with and we're effectively playing 2, 5, 10, 45, so much bigger here. I put in a raise to $200, action folds back to the small blind who says he's going to play this hand completely blind, makes the call, haven't looked at his cards yet, and the big blind gets out of the way and folds. So we're gonna play a pretty spicy one and when the flop comes, deuce, three, five, two spades in the hearts, he throws out a bet of $200 and it's going to be a pretty dicey spot as he hasn't looked at his cards yet and we're playing against 100% of range. We think king high here is pretty good so regardless of what the flop is it looks okay for us so I decide to make the call with king high. He's got about $800 left in the stack and something tells me that we're going to play for all of it without him even looking at his cards yet. We're off to a turn, which is the 10 of hearts. We are unimproved. There are two flushers out there now, and he thinks for a while, and <laughs> of course he decides to rip it all in for 800 total. I just asked to confirm whether he's seen his cards or not, considering that in this spot, we're obviously just totally gambling here. He literally can have any two cards, and when he confirms that he hasn't looked yet, I don't know, Kevin, let's just gamble. I call for a total of $864. Let's pray and hold somehow. King high is good. The river is the three of clubs. So board pairing seems good for a king high holding. I show king high and now it's off for Kevin to flip over his cards. 
Before he reveals it, let's hit that like button for some good luck to win a $2,000 pot totally blind with King High. Please hit that like button. It'll help the channel and this video. Now, time for Kevin to look. I got a five! Oh my God. And a queen! Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> Gotta respect the gamble, honestly. Our stack, unfortunately, takes a hit. All right, let's go. Yeah, Put it up to Kevin. Oh, we're playing 2 5. I'm playing with this. <laughs> All right, this is Kevin, the infamous Queen 5 hand, <laughs> all in blind. Absolute psycho. Gotta love the gamble, though. <laughs> we're playing my stakes. I love it. <laughs> so, those are all the antics at this 2 5 game. We get moved to the 5 10. We were in the 2-5 for $2,000, out for $13.55 after the blind king high hand, and we're going to need to run it up at the 5-10. One of the first interesting spots of the 5-10 table, I am on the button, of, so of course I straddle the $20, and of course Kevin blind raises to $50, and of course action folds to me. I look down at a not so pretty holding 10 deuce off suit and against Kevin, gotta respect his gamble, I decide to propose a fun idea. He hasn't looked at his cards yet and I ask if he wants to flip and I tell him I have a pretty terrible hand. We agree to $500 and just run out a flop turn and river, so let's gamble baby, let's do it. Do you wanna flip for a thousand? For I have a dog shit hand, I look but I have a dog shit hand. For a thousand? Yeah. I'll throw in 500, you call, I won't touch my cards, you don't raise. Hello? 2500. <laughs> Such a shit. Man. This guy comes up to me and goes, I hear you're crazy, I haven't looked yet. I'm just hoping no seven, no deuce. Oh, uh, well, I, I, I might have something. I check. I don't know, I'm pretty I check. Yep, we check. No, I don't want to Check. Check. Ten deuce. Ten. So I show the premium 10 deuce off suit, and he actually shows 8 3 off suit for a straight. If only the 10 didn't come, we actually could have had a chance to win with 10 high. What a brutal suck out in the favor of Kevin. The gamble lives on and he wins a thousand dollar pot. All right, after some of the antics are over, we actually play a normal hand with ace jack of clubs in the small blind. There's a middle position open to $55. Action onto me here. I think we're gonna go for a raise with a pretty good hand. So I put in a three bet to $215. Action folds back to this middle position player who decides on making the call. He's got about $1,000 in his stack. So playing pretty shallow here at this 510. Going to a flop of six, seven, three, two spades. It's whiff city for us on this board. But as a three better, I want to take a stab and throw it a bet of $150. We get a lot of the over cards to fold and typically just get called by some pairs and some flush draws. For 150 though, he makes the call, so not really loving this situation. But when the turn comes the nine of spades, this card just really hits him a lot more than me. So I decide to just check this one. And to my surprise, he actually checks this back so we get to see a free river. The river is the Jack of Hearts. This is quite the lovely river to see as we have top pair. And arriving here as played, I think I like a check here. Betting with only $600 behind seems like a pretty weird spot as we probably just rip it all in and I don't know what worse hands can call. So I check and he actually ends up checking it back. So got to expect our ace jack to be good. We show and we scoop this pot up, chipping up here a little bit after our gambling losses. Next hand, we've got King 10 of diamonds in the small blind playing shorthanded here. Action folds to me, so in a blind versus blind situation, I raise it up to $40 and the big one makes the call. This big one player is not Kevin. He wasn't at the table, but we're going heads up to a flop of Queen 10 6 to clubs. With middle pair and a good kicker, I decided to just check this one, uh, play this a little bit differently. He actually ends up betting out $65. It's a pretty large sizing here, and I can't say for sure what he could be holding, but as played, I'm never going to be folding middle pair and a good kicker here so far, so I make the call for 65, and we're off to see a turn. 
When the turn comes, the Ace of Spades. Now we've improved to a gut shot straight draw and a pair. And also this Ace will typically hit me more as played. So I'm just gonna check this one with our third pair now. And he actually ends up checking it back. So certainly could be a Queen X holding or some sort of draw. At the very least, it's one pair at best. And when the river comes the four of hearts, it is a total blank. And I'm gonna try to get this one to showdown with third pair. I check and now onto him. He doesn't wanna check it back. He wants to throw out a bet and it's a pretty large one to $175. Given how this hand is played, it's pretty weird. And I think that if we call, we're bluff catching here. And I don't want to be shown a queen. My read here on the situation is that he has one pair or some sort of missed draw. And instead of bluff catching here and making the call for 175, I think we put max pressure against one pair holdings by actually check raising as a bluff. I think all one pair holdings would be put in a pretty terrible spot and wouldn't be able to call a raise. So going with my gut, I put in a raise to 550. So hoping that this bluff and check raise can get through. Luckily, he ends up folding and we do get it through. So maybe he had some sort of queen X holding and went for value on the river. Lucky to uh, just get this one through and get the bluff through. It's been action city on this table and in this hand with jack nine of hearts in the small blind, there is an only gun open to $35 action folds to me. I certainly want to play this one, but considering we're out of position, I'm going to do it through a raise and I decided to raise it up to 130. The big blind folds and this under the gun player decides on making the call. So we're off to see a flop out of position, which comes pretty good. It's ace, jack, nine, rainbow. Obviously ace high boards will favor me a lot of the time, but with a disguised two pair, I put in a C bet of $100 and for 100, it's a good price, he makes the call. We're off to a turn which comes the eight of spades, brings in a backdoor flush draw. As strong as we are with two pair, I don't think that this eight of spades is going to connect with me too much. So I actually think it's okay to check sometimes and mix it up, especially out of position. So I actually decide on a check here and he ends up checking this one back. So we're off to a river which is a disastrous ace of spades. Pretty gross, backdoor spades gets there. We're counterfeited pretty much. And top pair is turned into trips. So now just uh, just giving up, hoping to get the showdown here. I check, unfortunately he has other options and plans. He bets out $150. I can't even bluff catch this one, I don't think. Really can't call this bet as he certainly can have a lot of ace X's. So as painful as this is, pretty much the worst river card we wanted to see. I just let my cards go and fold. Let them have it this time. Hand following that, about an hour into the session, we pick up Ace King and we're playing the normal 510 here. I open things up to $30 in early position and Kevin to my left, he's back and he decides to put more money in the middle. He three bets to $80. Action folds back to me and given the stack sizes, we're certainly going to bump this one up 100% of the time put in the four bets to $250 out of position. And he decides to make the call rather quickly with about $1,300 in stacks. So we're off to a flop. The flop comes king, queen, 10, all hearts. Oh boy, what a flop for us. And to be very honest with you, at the moment of this hand, I actually forgot whether I had the ace of diamonds or the ace of hearts. So that's actually going to decipher how we play this hand. I decided to check this one as I'm unsure what I'm holding, which is not ideal. And I also don't want to give off a tell doing a heart check by looking at my cards. So I checked to him and he throws out a bet of $250. I think this is a pretty good price to just check call. We have top pair, top kicker. And regardless, if we have the ace of hearts or diamonds, I'm going to make the call regardless. So 250 to go. The turn comes a four total blank on this board. So I check once again, still unsure which ace I have, which is pretty bad. He bets out again for $250. And once again, I think this is a pretty good price. I make the call for 250 and we're off to see a river, which is the seven of hearts. I actually don't know if this is terrible or really good. Um, I'm gonna check for a third time though, let him act and do whatever he wants to do. And he decides to go all in. So now once he jams for about $800, I can check my cards and I see the ace of hearts. 
really relieved at that. Um, obviously, we're not going to be folding pretty much the nut flush here. I made the call expecting to win, and we show our hand, and we're going to take this pot down as he mucks. Right after the hand, he tells us that he had the jack of hearts, so that is a pretty gross cooler there. He flops the open-ended straight flush slash royal draw, which is a crazy flop for him. Just happy to win this one through a cooler and have a pile of chips pushed our way. In the next hand, with ace 10 of spades in the small blind, there is a hijack open to 40. The cutoff makes the call and we're back in the small blind. We're gonna go for a raise here. I put in a three bet to $200. Action folds back to this cutoff player who I've had some history with. Seems like he enjoys playing hands and when the hijack folds, he makes the call with a relatively deep stack. So we're going to a flop, which looks pretty good for our specific hand. 10, seven, deuce, two diamonds and a heart. So with top pair, top kicker, I'm gonna go out, throw out a bet here, and I'm gonna size up to $225, about 50% of the pot. And for 225, this cutoff player decides on a call. When he calls here, I know that we're probably ahead a lot of the time. I think he raises a lot of his stronger holdings. And when the turn comes, the three of hearts, certainly a good looking one for us. This player has about $2,000 in his stack and I debate between what size I wanna throw out here. After thinking for a while, I think a larger bet makes the most sense. So I like to go for $800, trying to go for max pain here with top pair, top kicker. He never really has too many over pairs in the spots. And like I said, I think sets are hands that beat us, raise on the flop. And now he goes deep into the tank. If he has a draw here, it's gonna be a pretty gross spot as there are two different flush draws out there along with some straight draws as well. But after thinking it over for about two to three minutes, he ends up making the call with about $1,200 behind. So we are definitely building a big pot here. The river comes the nine of diamonds, not really one of those cards we wanted to see. Granted, there weren't a ton of cards we wanted to see. We lose to the front door flush getting there. We lose to hands like 10, nine or pocket nines. So not really happy with this one. I decide to check to him and I'm praying please, for the love of God, check back. He does tank for a while, but ends up checking back, which is good for us. We show our hand, he mucks his cards, and we ship another big one our way. Things are going well for us here. The very next deal though, before we can even put our chips onto our stack, we pick up six, seven of diamonds on the button. With Kevin to our left in the small blind, we obviously put in the straddle of 20 bucks and Kevin puts in the blind raise to 100. And of course, action folds back to me here playing five, 10, 20, 100. Uh, certainly a fun hand to play in position with a pseudo connector. I decided to just make the call for $80 total and we're off to see a flop. The flop comes ace, 10, eight, two diamonds and Kevin does not look at his cards. He just throws out $125 blind. He started with about $1,000 in his stack total for the hand. And considering we have a combo draw and only seven high, he can easily have any two and can totally whiff this board. So let's just try to get all the chips in the middle and gamble it up against him. I rip it all in. It's about $900 total. And now he says that he has to look at his cards, which is certainly an option for him. As a fair and friendly poker player, I allow him to have the option to check his cards before committing $900 in the middle. And when he looks at his cards, he quickly snap makes the call. We're off to a run out, hoping to improve. We do improve, but unfortunately it's only a pair of sixes. I don't think that certainly can be good here. And he actually lets me flip over his cards. I can't wait. You need to see this. Really? Yeah, yeah. You pick one. Well, flip it. You flip it. Two pair. Oh, that's so good. Now flip that. I can. Oh. <laughs> so good. <laughs> and of course, we flip over ace 10 off suit. I think he's won all of the hands he's played blind against me now, which is pretty impressive. Ends up flopping top two pair. And I guess that's a cooler. When you blind shroud to $100, flop top two pair, life is pretty good. Our stack takes a hit against Kevin's antics, but the next orbit, we pick up ace five off suit. We're on the button again, and you know the drill. 
I straddle it up to $20 and Kevin blind bets 125 this time. So it looks like the increments are increasing. Action folds to me. Kevin has about $1,000 in his stack. So effectively, given the blind raise, it is technically less than 10 big blinds. <sighs> We're just gonna ride the variance once again. We've been here before. We're gonna do it again. I announce all in. And now he goes deep into the tank. It seems like he doesn't have anything that great, but you just never know with Kevin. He's always willing to gamble. And he ultimately says that if he wins, he stays. If he loses, he goes home and flicks in a chip for a call. So we've got ace high. We're pretty much confident we're ahead of a lot of his holdings, but can't be too far ahead here. We're off to a run out. Ball. I have nothing. I got one. I got three. Oh. The runout comes and honestly, he's just running too hot against us when he commits his stag blind. He ends up with trips with queen eight off suit. So nice hand, Kevin. We were only ahead by a little preflop and we were quickly dominated once the flop came. Just can't beat the gamble right now. For one of the last interesting hands of note, Things get spicy as we're in the small blind. There's a button straddle of 20 and it seems like things are working out for Kevin when he blind raises. So I decided to blind raise to $40 in the small blind. So playing effectively 20, 40 this hand, Kevin is in the big blind and he puts in a raise to $115. Now the plus one player three bets to 400 with about $2,000 in his stack and action folds to me. And of course, we look down at a premium ace king off suit. Shit. Of course, we're gonna play a big one with my blind raise. It's only about 50 big blinds effective with this 2K stack. And there's really only one way to play this one. And I think it's gonna be an all in because folding this seems really nitty. So I rip it all in. It's a 50 big blind shove. Kevin, the big blind folds and the player in plus two, plus one snaps it off for about $2,100 total, oh boy. With this snap all in, I'm pretty much just praying he has pocket queens here, as if he has kings or aces, we are just severely dominated, and it's the one hand we're hoping to race with. But when the flop comes, ace, queen, high, the one hand we're racing against now has a set, and unfortunately, indeed, he does have pocket queens. Ace, king does not improve and we're gonna ship $2,142 his way. The money can just come super quickly and it just also leaves super quickly as well. We take a pretty big hit to our stack. This is the definition of riding the variance in this session. All right, everyone, wrapping up the session. Oh boy, let's go over the numbers, shall we? This was um, a nice welcome back to Boston Billiard. Haven't been here in a while and whew. I have nothing to say. Just thank you for sticking to the end. If you made it this far, uh, it has been nonstop action. And uh, you know, if you're tired from watching this video or if you got enough degen out of you by watching this video for like a month, then um, you're welcome for going through all of that with me. Let's go over the numbers. Um, in the 2-5 game, uh, we did lose a little bit in for 2,000 out for 13.55. Uh, so loss of $645 there in like an hour and a half. And then the 510 happened. The 510. We we're in for $4,050 out of the 510 for 3720 So uh, another bit of an L. Couldn't catch the case of the run goods in those all-in hands. Although, granted, um, I don't know. They had better gamble than me uh, today. But I have nothing to say. This video is what it is. And uh, if you made it to the very end, thank you so much for watching. What a ridiculous 510 game this was. And uh, this was good practice, maybe. I don't know if we'll see this much gamble in LA or Texas, but uh, <laughs> you guys got it in this video. Thanks for watching this one. I've made this far always. If you haven't subscribed, you're new to the channel. That button's always free. And <laughs> I'm not that I deserve but laugh at this. This is so ridiculous. See ya, peace.